after a long wait in the hot sun, our river pilot introduces himself as Captain Stanley. Hello, good afternoon. Jeremy. Like Brian, he's a Wapishana and one of only a few people who know the safe route through the rapids. Before we set out, I ask him about the monsters that lurk out here. He tells me about one called the Shupi Tu. It is another new name to me, but down at the river, he shows me where it lives. You get in two rocks very dizzy, please. Lay down the top rock. As soon as he see you, jump. As I try to find out more, the Shupi Tu leaves the real world and becomes something much more fantastic. Do people say that it's dangerous? Yeah, dangerous, yeah. Why? Carl breeze, Carl rain, yeah. heavy rain, mm -hmm. thunder. So it can cause bad, dangerous weather, but does it attack people as well? Yeah, attack people. So when, when it gets you, you just hook you from, from here. Yeah. So I should yeah. pull you under the water? Yeah, I pull you under the water. Most people are frightened. So most, so most people are frightened of this place? Yeah. The Shippy 2 is new to me, but it reminds me of monsters I have been warned about before. Mythical beasts created by the imagination of local people to try to explain unknown dangers hidden beneath the surface of the water. But experience tells me there is always a glimmer of truth in these tales. In Japan, the mysterious kappa was a huge salamander. In Lake Iliamna, Alaska, the monster was inspired by a giant sturgeon. And the Maori legend I investigated in New Zealand turned out to be a huge eel. I wonder what real creature could have inspired this fisherman hooking monster, the Shupi 2. And pe people, do they, do they say it still lives here? I believe so, it's still there. 